。今日广州天气唔稳定啊，雷雨活跃，局部地方雨势比较大，仲伴有短时间。Thunder, lightning, and torrential rain are frequent phenomena in Guangzhou, as the wettest provincial capital in mainland China. For thousands of years, Guangzhou has been fenced off from the central plains by mountains. Once the land of southern barbarians, despite its storms, this land gave birth to a city blessed with opportunities. There is no other city like Guangzhou. We call it the Millennium City of Commerce. Who created Guangzhou? What sustained its prosperity for thousands of years? To answer this question, we have to revisit the stormy days of Guangzhou. This is Nanling National Forest Park, standing 300 kilometers to the north of Guangzhou. This mountain range on the southern edge of mainland China spans 600 kilometers from east to west, and 200 from north to south. With mountains blocking the way, cold northern air masses and southern monsoons collide here. This leads to widespread rainfall that measures up to 2,000 millimeters a year. Such abundant precipitation combines with the Xi River coming from the Yunnan Guizhou Plateau. To form a mega river, its annual runoff of 336 billion cubic meters is six times that of the Yellow River. This is the Pearl River, China's second largest river by volume. The Pearl River flows southward and empties into the sea via eight river mouths. The sediment it carries creates the second largest alluvial delta in China, the Pearl River Delta. Over time, river sediment has deposited outward and gradually encircled bedrock islands within the bay, including the Baiyun Mountain. These islands ultimately shape the mountainous terrain on land, and Guangzhou sits right at the heart of the Pearl River Delta. Today, the Pearl River Delta is still expanding outward to the sea by 10 meters per year. Nonetheless, in Guangzhou, we can still find the marks left behind by the sea. This is Qixingang Paleo Coast Site. It's almost a hundred kilometers away from the closest shore, which is rare for its kind around the world. Several thousand years ago, powerful waves reached all the way here, and their endless ebb and flow hollowed out the lower rocks along the shore. Without support, the rocks above simply collapsed. Over time, erosion by the waves meant the rocky shore slowly retreated. As the tide receded, a wide platform underneath the rocks gradually emerged. This is a typical marine abrasion landform. Today, the Paleo Coast remains, but above it, all we can see are intricate bridge networks and skyscraping towers. In South China, the Pearl River Delta possesses the largest and most fertile plains, and the elaborate Pearl River Basin naturally connects the entire region. In 214 BC. The Qin Empire decided to build a city here, attracted by the interconnected river basins and vast plains. And Guangzhou, a city that now has over 2,200 years of history, was officially born. But relying solely on the Pearl River, at best, would have made Guangzhou a regional hub instead of the nationally impactful megacity it is today. For it to accomplish such a feat, we need to look beyond the Pearl River Delta and across the Lingding Channel. The sea here is the largest of the four seas bordering China. The South China Sea. This is where the south winds arise. This is a polyhedral gold bead crafted by welding. It first appeared in 500 BC in the Italian Peninsula. Back then, it probably set off from the Mediterranean Sea, passed through the Persian Gulf, sailed across the Indian Ocean into a port near Guangzhou, and entered China during the Eastern Han Dynasty. All this gold, silver, and porcelain, arriving from different countries across different dynasties, assemble like puzzle pieces that together form a prosperous and lively maritime Silk Road. Situated in proximity to the South China Sea, Guangzhou exploited its geographical advantage and became the most prominent port along the maritime Silk Road, connecting countries in Southeast Asia, South Asia, and West Asia. It was literally China's South Gate. More importantly, seasonal monsoons here provided the necessary power for sailing ships to travel over long distances. As a result, the world and its ships were connected to Guangzhou across the ages. 
and Guangzhou in turn connected with the rest of China via river and land routes. Open to navigation from the Qing and Han dynasties, Guangzhou rose to become the largest port of the East during the Sui and Tang. It's a history that has left indelible traces in this ancient city. During overseas exchanges in the Tang dynasty, Huaisheng Mosque, the very first mosque in China, was established in Guangzhou. In the 19th century, Western colonizers built the Gothic Sacred Heart Cathedral here too. And if you turn around, you will see arcade houses all over the city. This imported veranda architecture not only brought Guangzhou its urban charm, but also accommodated the city's unique climate. During wet seasons, balconies act as umbrellas. On a blazing hot summer day, these umbrellas become the perfect shelter. Apart from architecture, the most important influence the Sea Connection has on Guangzhou is its strong business culture. Paper Store Road was once the epicenter of the paper industry. Rice Market Road, the trading hub for rice, and Bean Stall Upper Street, the bean wholesale market. We can also find Wall Street, Hat Street, Second Hand Clothing Street, Night Soil Street, Agate Lane, Tofu Lane, First Store Road, and Paddle Store Road. Even during the seclusion and lockdown period of the Qing Dynasty, Guangzhou remained China's only port open to foreign trade. The Siguan Enclave was where the 13 Hongs monopolized foreign trade. These quaint houses lining the street were Guangzhou's central business district back then. After the founding of the People's Republic of China, Guangzhou became the country's most important city for foreign trade, which served to connect the newly independent country with the world. In 1957, the first China Export Commodities Fair was held in Guangzhou. It's better known as the Canton Fair. For a long time, the Canton Fair has been China's predominant channel for foreign trade. As it's gradually scaled up, the Canton Fair has had to change venue several times. In 2022, with the Padro Convention and Exhibition Center, now the largest exhibition complex in the world, more and more people from different countries and sectors will continue to explore the potential of China's foreign trade at the Canton Fair. But success in commerce and trade alone isn't enough to have transformed Guangzhou into this great city that overflows with opportunities. The key to its perpetual prosperity over several millennia lies in the talent drawn from across China to build their homes and realize their dreams here. In Guangzhou, a large proportion of the Cantonese people today trace their roots back to ancient migrating populations fleeing wars on the central plains. They left everything behind and traveled from afar to Guangzhou to seek refuge. To commemorate their origins, the migrants built ancestral halls in their new homes. Based on myths, folklore, and symbols from Chinese tradition, they created the unique roof tile designs in their ancestral halls, praying for stability in their lives so that their beliefs could be passed on and their families kept together. Over the centuries, countless passionate students and brave venturers have landed here on their way home from overseas, bringing back new values and ideologies all of which have helped shape modern China. During the turbulent times, nationalists inspired by new ideas strived for reform. Revolutionary sites can be found across the city. Since the introduction of Chinese reform and opening up, visionaries from all over the country have traveled south to fulfill their dreams. The huge Guangzhou railway station became the first stop on their journey a powerful start to their Guangzhou dream. Throughout the decades of development, skyscrapers kept rising, while China's internet industry continued to grow and evolve here. Drones, autonomous driving, deep sea mining of combustible ice, and other groundbreaking technologies and applications, together with all kinds of new trends and ideas, many of them found their way into China via Guangzhou. If we go back to the coast, to the place where Guangzhou goes global, you will realize that though the waterways have changed over time, the old ports of Guangzhou never became obsolete. Today, the port of Nansha operates 141 shipping routes, linking major ports around the world. It's become a new world-class port. Let's return to the question we began with. 
Who created this perpetually prosperous Guangzhou? The answer is clear. The combination of the rainy climate and the Pearl River encouraged the earliest local people to settle here. The surging South China Sea, powered by monsoons, provided them with a platform for growth, and the influx of talent cultivated the visionary mentality of the city. Come the stormy days, come the people. This is Guangzhou, where flowers bloom and the city shines. This is Guangzhou, where the economy thrives and the people enjoy their lives. This is Guangzhou, which will never cease to be a city without limits.